I always hate going in there. In the world of cyberpunk, there's a lot of lingo that makes the world feel much more unique. But what if you wanted to play the game while avoiding these words? Like a geezer unable to accept the new age. Can you beat cyberpunk without hearing choom? The rules are rather simple. I must play with the volume on and can't press the skip dialogue key throughout the game. I'm unable to not only hear or see the word choom, but I must also avoid the word gonk as well. If I hear either word, I'm forced to reload my last save. And for bonus difficulty, I can't save the game, and I can only use the auto saves the game gives me. I was originally going to force myself to reset the game completely, but due to time, for the fun of the run, because I'm a little bitch, I decided reloading saves would do the job. But enough of the boring rules, we start with me choosing Corpo, as my next few vids seem to be street kid themed, play a female for once, I hit random a few dozen times until I get someone who can't handle hot wings. I changed them later, but the build is focused into using mantis arms and a shotgun, so I only really level up body and reflex. Now, why would I make such an up close and personal build while trying to avoid people who say words I can't hear? Good question, but I don't care. I meet cyberpunk Nicolas Cage, get told to do my job before getting fired for doing my job, show my love of fashion. Do your pants have like fake assless chaps? What is that? I've never noticed his pants before. What the hell? get pulled up so hard that six months pass, try to take a little peek on the mission, and go in hot and loud against the scabs. Scrapping them up, and getting jealous seeing Jackie give someone else a hug. See what happens to the single mobs in my area when I use ad blocker. Save her life to show my apologies, but still get zapped. I shoot down the van people for not actually giving me free V-Bucks, see Jackie play nice, and even let him handle it himself. And Jackie catches me off guard with a quick, You motherfucker. So I reload my last save, still don't get my free V-Bucks, don't jump in the conversation to avoid ruining the challenge, I sleep peacefully and wake up stupid as I optionally check my email and see... Oh my goodness. I hate everything. Wake up smart this time and have a PTSD-filled lunch with Jackie Chan. A partly gold-plated cool. God, I didn't think that was the word cool for a second. I was like, come on, don't do this to me, Jackster. Come on, man. Get fixed up by Vic and get to hear the best joke for the umpteenth time. Run into any ne'er do wells. <laughs> you know exactly what they ne'er did well. <laughs> That's so, it was so funny, Vic. Meet up with not a dex build Deshaun, where he gives me a single potato chip and a job. I call up the first part of the job, Meredith. We have a peaceful meetup before a backup dancer wants a piece. Meredith tries to be like Bill Cosby and gives me something spiked. But I see through her facade. Meredith threatens me in the worst way possible. Try to fuck me in any way, and I'll be seeing you real soon. I would never dare. And I find out I can clean the chip. Why would I do that, though? But that why would I becomes why shouldn't I? Much faster than I expected. So I meet up with Jack, get a barrel put in my face, and enjoy it so much that I rat out Meredith. And after getting the bot, I'm surprised to see that you instead fight Militech on the way out instead of Maelstrom. Oh, I can fight Militech? All right, that's kind of cool. I experience a wild glitch. Oh, what the? Okay. And thanks to my new friends, Militech goes down easy. Experience a John Marston moment, inform Dex about what I've done, meet up with a fellow woman, and get to experience some girl time where we talk about the uh, girl stuff. I don't know, man. I'm scared of women. I see some great foreshadowing, experience the joy of a spontaneous snap, before experiencing the scariest thing ever, angry Hispanic woman. You don't quite grasp the risks I took by letting you in here What well, I'm risking poking around with this stuff. Man, my fault. I'm sorry. Deepest apologies. I see why you never tell little bro to use the riz he uses on his homies on a woman. You look like a cut of fuckable meat. Go through the whole BD for information and get a level for doing nothing. Before I do the heist, I grind some levels, money, and street cred for some minor cyberware before getting some bad flashbacks. And once I finally make my way to Street Cred 10, I finally get the right to carve off some flesh, basically just getting Mantis Arms, as I don't know a run where I can ever use them besides this one, Armor, and a Sand Deviston. Finally respec into Reflex of Body, bump into the nice officer from earlier before she becomes not so nice. Don't you remember me, ma'am? Come on. Leave me alone, Chum. You...
Reload forces me to respec again, and I meet up with Jackie, but he seems a little upset that I made him wait this long, so he took it out on me. It's what's inside that counts, Chum. You suck. You're the worst. I don't like you. You smell bad on the weekends. You smell bad in every day that ends in Y. I'm forced to slowly make my way all the way back to the afterlife. Don't choose the corpo line. And here, Jackie's not so special special. Shot of vodka on the rocks, lime juice, ginger beer. Oh, and most importantly, a splash of love. Why is, a, why is his drink just a Moscow mule? Gotta be a little bit more original than that, Mr. Jack. Rat out Evelyn for once and get to hear Jackie's real laugh. <laughs> Before getting driven by the Delamid, I dissociate from Jackie, get forced to leave iron, but these guns, they're going out on the town. I enjoy my weird walking animation, prove that I am in fact an arms dealer, take in the terrible view, use the bot to put the cyber in cyberbullying, grab Lay's new secret chip flavor, lock eyes with the best thing that's ever happened to me, watch the stunning act of a man bringing his father back to life, and get pinned for the murder when it doesn't work. It wasn't me. Why are you looking at it like I did? I didn't do this. You think I could do this? I couldn't do that. Try the atheist's way of taking a leap of science and get to enjoy the fun of Mantis Blades. <laughs> I get a free level up for Reflex. I shoot down the drones. Jackie lets me eat the new secret flavor. But it turns out Dex wanted it, and I get shown that you aren't you when you're hungry. Figure out that I'm not playing Skyrim, find out that you're not you when you die, tear up Arasaka and encounter the weirdest glitch I've seen in this game. What the fuck? What even happened? I just, I just coexisted. Get caught into a soft lock. Oh no. Please don't do this to me. Do it once more and almost encounter the glitch again. I hope you know that every time I do these cutscenes, I do the same happy horseshit like this. True rocker boy style. My brain gets fried to a crisp after too much doom scrolling, wake up down in the dumps, get to see someone experience the joy of murder, and finally get to let out all that road rage I have over single mothers who won't let me change lanes. Vic tells me I'm unwell, and that there's a man deep inside me. I honk me me me, wake up to my mind husband, and he treats me like a wife in the 1940s when I overcooked dinner. Take my girl boss pills, don't check my email this time, and get a date for breakfast. Unfortunately, he only talks about himself and work I need to do for him, before another man tries to take my side, but still tells me to do things for him, and encounter another small roadblock. It seems doing a weird open the text and reload a save, the game seems to count it as red without me seeing it in a loaded run, so I call Judy for info on the girl I read it out, make the mistake of trying to honor Jackie. Shut up. Oh my god, I can't do anything. I can't exist. I can't breathe. I hate it here. Skip over and talk to Rogue, pay for the info, ignore Claire, and she's not too happy about it. Hey, what gift? I get upgraded like a dispenser that's going up. Judy reluctantly gives me info, which takes me to clouds. I pay the doll for ones. I was gonna try to do this section sneaky. However, you are the worst and nobody likes you. Get lucky with my reloaded save and start to just tear it up. Smack down Woodman. Hello. Goodbye. I find Evelyn's last known location. I'm still a little salty from the Skippy run and solo weapon runs in the future and that this woman makes me give her my weapons. So, like a man in the 1940s, I tell her what for. The officers don't like me pointing around my unregistered and stolen firearms. What did I do? I me neither. What's happening? Johnny, the not real man in my mind, moves this real chair. And whenever I question him about it, he starts doing whatever the hell a mewing is. I get called cute, gaslight, gatekeep, and girl paws. Meet Judy at the clinic. I kindly ask the man where Evie is. Using buzzwords like please and thank you, I find a cool weapon, yo, and test it out on the nearby furniture. Oh, I killed him. Judy makes life harder than it has to be. Ugh, have to be real gonks. No. 
Why would you do that to me? I try to use other voice lines, Gonks. take my anger out on men, and try and run from Judy. While I can't hear it, I can see it. Hey, Wakoko. I'm sad. Find out that even if I get new dialogue started, it doesn't stop Judy's from showing. I try and work harder and not smarter by reloading a save, this time not telling Judy where Evelyn might be, but once I make my way back to the clinic, I'll get disappointed to see her there once again. So instead, I work smarter by turning off subtitles, rushing to Wakako, and come back to see no slayers. So with the problem solved, I buy some cyber smut, find out where Evelyn might be because of my pizza preferences, and decide that we got it. There's nothing else to garner from this scroll. Make the mistake of writing with Judy while I try to be an Stop adult. It. It'd have to be utter gongs to waste her on something like that. Do my damn laundry, you motherfucker. Get forced to redo the BD, get away from Judy as fast as I can, and despite the fact that I passed Judy on the way to save Evelyn, she somehow beats me there. She lures me into the car. I don't wanna. And after a quick prep talk, I break in. I ask nicely where I could find Judy's friend, but even after being a little blunt with these people, they aren't too helpful. But after my own snooping, I find her no problem. We take her to a better napping place, I fall to the peer pressure of the cool kid, and get info on who Ev was working for. So after getting reminded of my favorite joke, Nah, just find us that Juju wirehead, okay? <sighs> so you didn't Juju on that fucking beat, so... I call Mr. Hands for info for the next mission, and finally get the info from Rogue and get told someone can help. I meet her ass first, and see her car is top notch. Did I just see that window go up? Don't talk on the ride to help Pan Am, set up a sneaky ambush, only for me to rush in and let her rip. After helping Pan Am, she immediately asks for more help. While I shouldn't do more than I need in case I hear some unwanted words, there's something that I need here. A sort of ace up my sleeve, if you will. An ace for my checkered past. I quickly rush down what I need, the Widowmaker. The big damaged ranged weapon that happens to be my favorite. I rip open and blow every idiot my way. Pan Am is of almost no help. I'm trying. Once everyone is done, bye. Goodbye. I distract myself as if mom just found her long lost friend at the store, and like a mom, yells at me for not being ready when she's finally ready. Me? Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Fuck you. Pan Am delivers her package. I make the mistake of reading a text from Rogue. You son of a bitch. Reload and ignore the text. Me and Pan Am enjoy a nice bottle of water, but she seems more dehydrated than myself. The next morning, we get to do my side of the deal, becoming like my favorite president and drone striking a children's hospital. But it turns out to hurt Pan Am's friend. I don't mind, as it lets me enjoy the amazing reflex perks of combat, which is the easiest and most fun it's ever been. Somehow save Mitch, help Pan Am get revenge against Militech. Bye. Bye. Pull a TF2 spy with having three hands, and experience a sort of super dash. Whoa. <laughs> I knock out Hellman, and encounter another huge roadblock for the run. You suck. My anger issues shine through as I completely rip up someone who doesn't cause the problem and have trouble trying to find a solution. I try and exit another way, but can't. I try and walk fast enough. Chimbas. I try using every consumable and my sand Devastin. Chimbas. Try and use my scanner to slow down time. Chimbas. But as I'm forced to walk this slow and can't do much else, I accept my fate. With looking at the spot the asshole stood, I find out that no. You can't beat Cyberpunk without hearing Choom. But Mama didn't raise no bitch. Well, she did, but that bitch ain't me. I press forward, talk to Hellman, and get forced to immediately fail the challenge once again. Gonk's fucking useless with Are you kidding me? Twice. Even after reload, it's a forced line. Johnny refuses to make eye contact from being the solo reason I can't succeed in this run. But I get to the next part of the story. Finding Ev's boss. Find Placide. Find someone else copying my fit. Guess I got good style, damn. I'm told to clear Militech from the small. He wants me to sneak, but nah, shotgun. I find out Militech is in fact here, go through my least favorite boss fight, just shooting on her back till she busts, and then easily lower her HP all the way down to zero. And get the joy of watching this. 
Now she's had enough. The cyber nerd cuts me a deal, and Placid is overjoyed with the news, even giving me uppies as a reward. I take a victory ice bath, have a nightmare of being so close to a woman, pick the failing choice. Another time, <laughs> Shut up. Oh my god, I hate you. Try and sequence break by jumping, but just get stabbed while mid jump. Enjoy my time with Thompson until he ruins it by being chromist. Chumbas. I reload a save, but once again, it's a forced line. Three for three. I just push forward and see Rogue doing her best. <laughs> I don't know what he saw in her. What the fuck is going on? Meet up with Mean Red. Militech killed all my problems, but I make sure to take all the credit. I shoot my way out of this hellhole and get the joy of killing the mean man. Doing so with my hot pink shotgun. Johnny tries to apologize for being the problem. I decide to let bygones be bygones, as I need as many backup endings as possible in case of emergency. I grab some heated mantis blades for the first time, and here's my first honest reaction. <laughs> Alright, okay. I need to play catch up with Takamura's side of the story, ask Oda for help, he says no, get to hear my new favorite part of this game. Wow. <laughs> Emo -san, what happened to you? I do not know. I do not recognize myself. And find out next time, I need to be cool. No. I need to get seven cool, damn it. Wakako gives us info on the parade, and we start to plan. I enjoy my lunch, forcing him to look me in the eyes as I devour this mid. We spend some time finding out that Takamura likes cats. I'm told to sneak into this building to hack the parade float, but I'm no solid snake, more of like a gas pool noodle. I go in, blades of flaming, and I get to once again enjoy no restrictions on combat, hopping around and shooting the place up, down, and all around. I do so well even Takamura doesn't believe it. I see a man trying to make a modest living. Sir. Sir, you can't be doing that out in the street like that. What are you doing? No pole dancing at midnight. Come on now. Easily hack the float and guess scare Takamura out of wanting dinner. I spend some time getting some upgrades and get screwed over by a terrible radio station. I reload and make my way back to the Ripper and get some upgrades. Meet back up to do the parade quest, take down the snipers as easy as something that's easy, and get to do my favorite boss fight. Finally getting to do Mantis v Mantis. It's fun, fast, loose, and most importantly, easy. Get rewarded with watching Takamura shoot a woman, and once again, make the mistake of doing something optional. You suck. You are the worst, and you smell bad, and you're terrible, and I hate you. You wouldn't believe me if I told you, but my last save was right before the Oda fight. Are you... are you... Oh. And for some reason, this has to be my most glitchy run. As for no reason in particular, Oda won't die. And I'm not just coping. He would get to 1%, and after getting hit more, and more, and more, just won't die. I smack, shoot, even let him refill his health to drop it once again. But no, Oda is just... So after I let him kill me, and I do the fight again, originally I was going to keep Oda alive, but now, no, no way. Get told to think fast chuckle nuts, and leave the building quickly, even leaving Takamura behind. My pettiness knows no bounds. Hanako says she wants to work together after all, Johnny doesn't wanna, and tells me Rogue can help us instead. So I give in, letting Johnny talk it out with her. He shows the hydration is important, but too much water can make you sleep in a not so great place. I then wake up back in control, the rogue says we might be able to save me. So once I'm ready, we sneak over to Adam Smasher's boat, and for once, I do things sneaky beaky like, until we get in the ship itself, and rogue shoots whoever this guy is. Only useful thing he has to say is Johnny being buried at the dump. So me and Johnny have a quick talk about life, and how I'm his best friend. And that's sad. He said he wants to save me, so to do so I weigh all my options, talking to Hanako to see if she can help. But her offer hurts my head so bad, I get an aneurysm. It doesn't help that when I get to the elevator and think about how penguins aren't from Madagascar, I wake back up at Vix, get rewarded with my two favorite things, 
and a gun. And unfortunately, Johnny isn't the only one to foil this run, as Misty joins in on the fun. My game audio didn't record this last bit, but even after trying to walk as fast as I can, I can't escape her voice fast enough and fail once again. I can't get that far that fast. I let Johnny make it up to me by letting him solve my problems. He sets everything up with Rogue. I get to cosplay as George W. Bush's worst enemy, take a peaceful sit in nature, before saying it's Johnny time and Johnnying all over the place. I save Wayland, enjoy the amazing combat one last time. <laughs> Red Lady helps us get to the last part of the run. Adam smashing your girl. Rogue's death let me start further in the fight, and with Wayland and my strong tech and wear, he really stands at zero chance. Except for the halfway point. Again. You can't hear it, but thankfully, you can at least see it. You piece of garbage. I redo the whole fight, but just keep my distance against the backup dancers at the halfway point. And the rest of the fight is a piece of cake. The glitches are on my side for once, as Smasher doesn't function for one of his phases. Are you fucking kidding me, Smasher? Really, man? Alright. And I let him suffer like I have. How about you krill yourself? I connected into Mikoshi, originally wanted Johnny to steal V's body, but the game quickly said, You a bitch and a hoe, where do I go? So I instead choose the ending I did last time, and even with talking to others in the afterlife, everything just kinda pans out. As I grab a gun, my character would never use to go rob the local space sperm bank, and with that, I prove that no, you can't beat Cyberpunk 2077 without hearing Choom. This run was the most fun and terrible thing I have ever done. I will never fully recover from this, but thank you all for watching. And thank you all so much for 4k subs and counting. If you have any ideas for runs for Cyberpunk or other games, leave a comment down below. And not as always, make sure you know about SEMA. SEMA Balls.